Today, Diedrich's powers are tested. And he hears words from his master. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Matt. Welcome to Roleplay Chat. And today we're going to continue our Blood and Betrayal campaign diary. We're actually going to mess around a little bit with the timelines. We're going to go back an episode and we're going to focus in on what Diedrich was doing while the rest of the crew was in the sewers fighting off Skavens. Yes, and uh, just to make sure everybody is on the same page, uh, Diedrich had a while back uh, two letters to deliver, one to Untergard, where the story started, and a second one to Middenheim. Mm -hmm. So we've been in Middenheim for a little while, but he never really had the uh, the uh, the occasion, like the the, the, opportunity. the opportunity. Thank you I mean, to uh, the, the the accusation of Hans Bromer's mur like calling him a murderer and sending him to jail and having to prove his innocence, and then running into the murder of of another individual in the middle of the streets in front of the library. It was just a lot of stuff all at once. Um, you know, you've been in the city for one day and all these things are going on. It, it's a, definitely, you kind of have to reprioritize the things that you, you need to be doing. But when the party started exploring the library more, Diedrich kind of took this opportunity to deliver his letter. Uh, the letter was addressed to a high magister in the college, the, the, the guild rather, of wizards and alchemy in the city of Middenheim. And, you know, the previous letter he had was extremely important. It was a letter warning Untergaard of an assault of beastmen. So Diedrich kind of was assuming that it was going to be something of similar magnitude. So he decided, you know, the party can keep investigating these murders. I have to run off. I'll loop back in as soon as I can. And he did this quickly and left them with a letter. He left Otis with a letter that he wrote by hand and then ran off. Yeah. And then he has the letter dest destined to uh, the High Magister. So he leaves, he knows where it is uh, pretty easily. He gets there mm -hmm. and there's no guards. There's uh, just a main door. So as he arrives, the door just open. Mm -hmm. Again, no guards. He just, okay, goes in. But to, to him, it's not really that shocking because it's the same at the college in Aldorf where he knows that everybody's expected at a blue magic college. Yeah, so he, he enters in, he meets an apprentice that opens the doors for him and leads him straight up to meet with Jenna. Uh, Jenna Eberhauer. Am I saying that right? Eberhauer. <laughs> Eberhauer, that's much easier to say. <laughs> he, a letter for Jenna Eberhauer, the high magister of the guild, and he's brought straight to her. Yes, and um, Jenna is... Happy to see him, not really surprised. He's like, she's, okay, you have something for me? Mm -hmm. Diedrich, okay, and gives him the letter that his magister uh, gave him a while back. And Jenna proceeds to read it, and like, oh, okay. And then she's like, everything, seen, everything seems in order, puts the letter down, and takes Diedrich to another room. Like, Follow me. And uh, reaching a, a new door, looks at Diedrich and asks him, so... You know what's behind that door, right? And Diedrich, being rusty from not having used any blue magic in a while, uh, naively says no. He says, no, I, I don't. And she looks to him kind of like, are you are you a fool? So he instantly takes this opportunity to focus in and rewind time. His eyes go white, kind of disappears mentally, and then comes back. Yes, I know what's behind that door. It's my test to become a journeyman. Yes, so... Jenna's like, great, opens the door, and there you can see there's a desk with an exam waiting for him. Sits down, writes the exam, and kills it. He, like, aces this thing. Um, you know when you're writing something and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I got all of it. He has yeah. it all figured out. Um, the second half of the exam, though, the practical half of the exam, he struggles a little bit more. Yes, so they uh, they go to a special ground where it seemed to be isolated in a way that the magic won't destroy anything. Mm -hmm. And um, Jenna asks him, you need to uh, show me one of your spells. Another spell that's not just a little cantrip thingy. I want to see an actual spell. 
So Diedrich knows one that he's pretty proud of, and it's a lightning spell. So he channels his energy, again, being rusty from not having had the opportunity to use it in several days, weeks even, he, he lets it all out. And out from his fingertips, sparks of blue energy crackling out, t targeted towards a, a dummy in the middle of the room. It's a pretty impressive sight for him. He's never really gone to do that before. Um, not too bad. Yeah, so Jenna seems satisfied. Maybe not impressed, but satisfied. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, great. Now we're going to test your ability to learn a new spell. She brings uh, an assistant, another magister of the college, and asks uh, him to teach Diedrich a new spell. The spell is Cer Cerulean Shield. Uh, it's a spell that allows the magic user to put a wall that stops all incoming projectiles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, listening attentively to the instructor, Diedrich duplicates the spell and is able to summon a wall of energy, kind of like the lightning, but much thinner, that surrounds the front of him, almost like a half of a dome uh, coming out of his fingertips, like a ghastly dome of crackling blue energy. And they throw things at him. They throw like slingshots of rocks and things and stones. And as they hit the projectile, they disintegrate not passing through, keeping him safe on the other side. So a, a newfound spell. It's been a while since Diedrich learned a new, a new spell like that, and he really showcased his ability uh, to, to evolve as a magic user. And mm -hmm. that, that time, Jenna is pretty impressed with learning, grasping a, a new spell like that uh, fairly quickly. Uh, he's also instructed, he, he doesn't get the chance to use it, but he's instructed that this spell has a second stage to it mm -hmm. that you can not only channel the project uh, to stop projectiles but you could channel it to surround yourself entirely and to have lightning bolts powers of energy charged within the shield that you could unleash at your own wrath so Diedrich is excited to hear that there's kind of a, a second step but before he gets the opportunity to really give it a go they tell him you know good job we'll see you tomorrow morning and he's a little bit unsure of, of what that means, but they, they say, it's all right, we're going to spend the night here, go to, to the quarters that we'll assign to you, and you get yourself cleaned up. So they go, they go there, someone's there to shave him, cleaning up, wash his clothes, give him new clothes. Mm -hmm. The clothes seems really, they, they seem really weird. They, they are very extravagant, a uh, blue collar, high collar, something totally different from his pretty low uh yeah. like messenger raggy clothes yeah they're, they're very ornate you know he's got mm -hmm. stars and moons encrusted on the sleeves on the collar as well it's a deep rich blue uh he's also given like a pendant with a comet on it and at this point Diedrich is starting to put two and two together he did well enough on his exam that he's going to graduate and that's just what happens the next morning so when he wakes up all tidy and clean and in his spiffy collar, sp spiffy collared robes, he heads down into the main courtyard of the guild. There he sees a hallway with uh, not a lot of Manchesters, usually for, he's been to gra graduation, well, graduation. Ceremonies we'll call it like that, yeah, yeah. ceremonies like that, uh, in the past, uh, in Aldorf mainly. And normally there's a lot more people, but now with the war going on, most of the magic users are actually gone with the Imperial Army. He notices that there's a lot of apprentice and old magisters. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, he's excited to be there and has um, someone with him, another graduating fellow. Uh, they talk a little bit and they're both really excited about ongoing this new step of the journey. So now up in front of everyone, the ceremony begins and Diedrich, uh, he's a little bit nervous, you know, he's a nervous guy. He's feeling all these eyes, although less than normal, on him, looking at him. And he's proud. He's proud of being here in front of everyone and having passed this important step in his, I guess, career as a, as a wizard. Uh, he's spoken to and has to kneel down and swear an oath. Uh, Jenna, the high magister that he met the previous day, asks him to swear an oath to the college, to the, defend the empire, 
and uphold the rules and regulations of using magic of the Celestial College, the College of Blue Magic. He instantly says yes. You know, he's a devout scholar who, who knows these rules by heart and is happy to be able to implement them. Yeah, because now that he has this, uh, this power that he can now use without being as um, supervised as was he was an apprentice, mm -hmm. he has a lot more responsibility. The colleges expect the, the apprentice, or actually the journeyman, not to use their magic in front of a lot of people without a good reason. They need a good mm -hmm. reason to use magic because it is frowned upon on, in, in certain space. So after swearing the oath, he is given his diploma. It's a very elaborate document with signatures on the bottom, emblems showcasing on the top, uh, all kinds of expensive inks and colors amongst it, with his name right dead center, uh, stating that he is now a journeyman. He's also given other gifts. Uh, he's given a robe of a similar midnight blue as, I'm oh, sorry, not a robe, a cape, mm -hmm. uh, a similar midnight blue as, as his robe. He's also given a logbook, uh, kind of a grimoire, mm -hmm. and they ask him, now you're going to need to write everything you do for the college uh, on your own time, log your adventures, log what you see, log what you learn, and this has a special key where you're the only one, it's your book, mm -hmm. it's basically your journal. And they want the journal back uh, when he comes back to for his next level, his magister level. Um, he's also given a telescope, a telescope or rather like a small looking glass, maybe something like this big, mm -hmm. um, that he's very familiar with. It's actually the telescope that used to belong to his master that he that Diedrich was carrying with him up until he brought it back to Jenna the day before. Uh, but there is one slight difference. Now the name of his master uh, below it, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm is Diedrich's name and he feels joyful and honored to be you know using the same telescope that his master Timothy uh, got to use and the ceremony is over he's officially a journeyman and there's one last catch they mm -hmm. tell him that now that he's a journeyman uh, he needs to go on a journey learn the world and everything and that comes again with a price and the price is you are not you are no longer allowed to use the college property to sleep, eat, and even books, mm -hmm. uh, unless you have a really good reason, um, because we want you to go on your own. Kicking the, the, the bird out of the nest, yeah. deal on your own for a couple of years, come back and we'll talk. So that's, uh, it's, it's a show of, uh, they have it's trust, trust, right? Like they, they, they trust that you're going to do the right thing and that you're equipped to deal with the world that's out there. Mm -hmm. But but it's still a quite quite a big blow for Diedrich. You know, he he now finds himself very alone in the world. His master is gone in the north somewhere fighting who knows what. Uh, his family near Aldorf is weeks away by travel. He's, he's by himself. He has these newfound friends, I guess you could call them friends, mm -hmm. but that's that's all he's got. And he he does feel the, the burden of this new solitude that he's now surrounded by. Yes, and that's probably the, one of the reasons he will later pretty quickly tell his new friends about his uh, powers mm -hmm. so he can have someone to rely on. At this point, the ceremonies starts to wind down. You know, there's food, there's drinks, there's some talking, but most of the younger wizards and apprentices need to get back to their duties. So Diedrich kind of, you know, looks at the, the guild one last time and says, all right, let's do this, a farewell. And he kind of heads off. But first, Jenna brings him to the side and gives him a piece of paper. And from the, the, the seal being broken and everything, he, Diedrich notices that it's part, at least, of the letter he actually brought to Jenna. So apparently there was two sections. There were one section instructing Jenna that his master, Timothy, was saying he's ready to pass the test. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do it. And the second letter was actually addressed to uh, Diedrich after he got his uh, journeyman. 
The letter will actually read because it's uh, pretty specific on words. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's almost an omen of what's to come and some kind of uh, task he gives to Diedrich for the coming weeks. So it says, should you read it? I can start it. Go ahead. Go ahead. So it says, Dear Diedrich, heed my words. The crossing of Untergard shall allow Todbringer to push back the assault of the Quadriad of Destruction. Beware, because it shall not be the end of torment. The city of the White Wolf is infested and poisoned. It shall be unless Black Blade of the Horned One is exterminated and the taint of the Overwolf removed. For the crimson skull sees much and speaks to many. Its eyes must be plucked from the shadows, its soul carved from the earth. The latter quickly must be retrieved. Read carefully as the sky will show you the way, for stardust shines the brightest through the lens of the far and the future. I wish you good fortune and a great destiny. High Magister Avric Tint. So this letter is uh, kind of cryptic, but Dietrich is used uh, for his master to speak in those kind of uh, mm -hmm. cryptic, cryptic, almost riddle ways. But he has a couple of things that he notices right away. Uh, the letter says something about Untergard uh, and the fact that the Quadrat of Destruction was probably referring to the four Chaos God was, uh, was stopped. So, but it says something about it's not the end of tournament. So Diedrich is like, okay, apparently we have other things to deal with. Yeah. City of the White Wolf, he knows pretty, like, right away that this refers to Middenheim. That's the other name of uh, Middenheim. And it says something about Black Blade, Horn One, doesn't really know exactly what that means. But another thing that uh, he manages to identify in this letter is the fact that the thing that's called the Lands of the Far and, and the Future it's actually something that his master calls the telescope. So uh, this telescope, he would often say, use your lens to see the far and the future. And that was kind of part of his uh, teachings. So there's a, a, a bit of things he knows about the letter. And there's a few other clear things, not clear, but there are a few other things that are clearly riddles to be solved. But Diedrich, you know, it is, is tired from having gone through his his tests, the ceremony, the nerves really got to him. So he needs to, you know, settle down, spend the night, and he, he goes and rents a room at a, at a nearby inn. Um, in his room, he's looking at his stuff, and he, get, he feels inspired to try and test out his his journeyman powers. I mean, he had them before, <laughs> but now that he's a journeyman, he feels all the all the better. So he does a, a, a actual premonition. Hunkers down for a couple of hours in the room, takes his telescope, looks out at the bright sky, and he wonders to himself, how are my friends? Yes. And then he sees, again, premonition are always a bit blurry, but he sees something pretty uh, defined. He sees the Temple of Sigmar. He sees the actual College of Magic. He sees, um, what's the other one? He sees the library. The library. That they were visiting prior. And there's kind of a plaza in the middle of these three landmark, if you if you want. And he sees multiple skavens mm -hmm. opening a great kind of a manhole uh, in the in the ground and jumping into, and then sees uh, some of his friends, new find mm -hmm. friends, fighting the same skavens. They're, they're starting to get overwhelmed. Otis and Ludolf could only do so much. There's skavens all over the place. Otis seems to be drowning in pain. What's going on? And that's where the vision ends. Diedrich immediately picks up and says, okay, I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> Runs out of the inn. Luckily, he was close by. Mm -hmm. Finds the grate in the plaza surrounding the skyline that he saw. You know, the, the Temple of Sigmar, the college, or not the college, but the guild, and the library. And jumps in. Charging up, getting ready for the fight, the first fight he's had in, in weeks and months. So, and for those who watched The Last Blood Betrayal, you'll recognize the actual way that he just joined the fight we had uh, last time into the sewers 
which is called A Storm of Ratman and The Blood of Betrayal. So that's where we're going to end today because that's when Diedrich joined the party mm -hmm. and with his new accoutrement and ready to <laughs> to snap uh, lightning at lightning at him. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So that, that, that sums it all up. Um, I, I want to quickly, briefly mention that, that Chris and I have decided to make more targeted episodes. Uh, prior to this, or several weeks ago, I want to be two weeks or so, mm -hmm. uh, our, our episodes of the Blood and Betrayal campaign diaries used to be followed immediately by a kind of deep dive behind the GM screen segment. Now what we're going to do, kind of like we did last last week, is we're going to split them up, or not last week, a couple weeks ago, yeah, yeah. we're mm -hmm. going to split them up into two distinct episodes. One just for the narrative part, so that you don't have to be worried about spoilers, and then a second one just with the behind the GM screen part, it gives us more flexibility to really dig deeper into the questions that Chris and I have for one another. Yeah, and that way it doesn't make like a 50 minute video sometimes. This episode was pretty short, but if you look at last time, it would have been a really long video. So, mm -hmm. or even like if you're listening on podcasts, it, it, it becomes a bit long. And we're doing something similar for the other. So we have our role play chat, which we talk about Mm -hmm. uh, mechanical, it's not storytelling, it's more about the art of game mastering or even being a player and just having a general discussion about it. We'll, act, uh, we'll also have another video that's the, um, the summary or the, yeah. the short version of that long discussion. So again, that's going to count as two videos. You'll get uh, the long version if you want to go th with us uh, through the discussion. So that way, it's not going to be as a uh, plan. It's more about learning as we go, which is the goal of this channel. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have more of a like the the conclusion and what we got out of this conversation. A very condensed summary that kind of will present itself more as like a list of steps or, or tips that you can hopefully learn uh, at a glance. Yeah, so we're really excited about this uh, new format. And also just for full uh, transparency, we are both going back to work. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be a little change. So that will allow us to have good content, very targeted, but at the same time, not stop uh, what we're doing. Exactly. So if, if you're happy about this change, or if you have uh, recommendations, or even if there are certain elements of our, of our content that you enjoy more, that you would like us to focus on uh, more, or, or have them happen more frequently, mm -hmm. please reach out to us. You can do so by contacting us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at roleplaychat. That's role underscore play underscore chat. Uh, send us a direct message and let us know the, the things that you would prefer us pinpoint on or if, if you're happy with, with this more targeted approach. And as always, you can also uh, contact us uh, through email. So our address is contact roleplaychat, all one word, at gmail.com. And I think that's everything for today, Chris. That's all, Matt. Let's call it a chat.